So here's the, uh, the adapter plate on the end of the motor, and we can see the uh, drive shaft to the motor sticking out here. Now for another crazy complicated custom part, the coupler. Um, since the car originally had a clutch, a flywheel is kind of this abrasive spinning disc. And in the middle of it, it has splines. It has kind of this, these flutes. And what I did was I just took the old, um, the old clutch plate. I ground down the four rivets that held all that uh, abrasive material onto the middle metal part, cut that down, and then those splines there match up with the shaft on the transmission. And then uh, we took that, just that little middle piece, and welded it into a Lovejoy coupler, which is one of several different types of couplers out there, some way to connect a shaft of one size to a shaft of a different size. And you can probably see a little better in this photograph here. It's two parts, three fingers, and it just goes together like this. So this part then goes between the drive shaft of the motor and the driven shaft of the transmission, and it connects the power between the two. Um, that was also something that I screwed up on because, you know, like I was saying, I, I didn't even have like an engine hoist. So the first time I, I put everything back together, what I did, I put the transmission in the car, and then I basically bench pressed the motor into position with one hand while trying, trying to tighten down the bolts with the other. And I really didn't get the, that two part in perfect alignment. So the first time I went for a ride in my electric car, it had a little bit of a rattle to it. And I thought, oh, I guess I had always heard that electric cars are supposed to be quiet, and mine has a little bit of a rattle. Eh, not a big deal. I'm sure it's fine. So about three months later, I'm driving along. Zzzz, clunk. And it stops running. And I think, ha, huh, I bet I know what that is. But by this time, I had made a lot of new friends, guys who could weld and machine and were building their own electric cars. And at that time, um, one of my new friends said, ah, you don't need that two-part thing. Just take the splines that match up the motor, the splines from the, uh, uh, the clutch disc, just weld them both onto a chunk of steel, do it in a lathe so that everything's perfectly lined up, uh, smooth it off, and this is the best hunk of steel you'd ever seen. You know, it's, it's that big around, and it's that wide, and it's solid. And when this thing was done, it went, yeah, that's not going to break. And my friend had some scrap stainless steel tube from like a piece of aircraft or something that he wrapped this whole thing in. So this is indestructible. It ain't going nowhere. And this is what my car runs on right now, and it's been absolutely fantastic. I've just never been happier. Is there a tension on that? What we actually did on that is uh, both shafts were splined. And because there's that chunk of steel right in the middle, um, there, there's no hole all the way through, which means that coupler can't slide down the shaft this way. And on the other side, it, it can't slide down that shaft either. So in fact, it didn't need any sort of a set screw or anything like that. Um, here you can see the motor, the adapter plate, which remember, I ended up doubling up just to make the spacing right, the transmission. And we got a hole in the transmission. I cut a hole in the bell housing just because that way, now I could see in for lining up those two shafts. It, that hole is based on how big my hand is to be able to reach in there, grab that, get everything lined up. And then once everything was in there, we put the bolts through that uh, connected together the transmission to the adapter plate and the adapter plate to the motor. And then uh, with my same little 12 volt jump starter, spun the motor at low speed at 12 volts and just made sure everything was perfectly lined up, tightened down all the bolts. And that was it. That's really all there was to it. Uh, here's a, a close-up looking through there. That's actually from the uh, original coupler. Now, another way to do it, um, a friend of mine right now is working on an electric pickup truck conversion. And this is the flywheel from his pickup truck. In his case, he's keeping the clutch. So he's going to reuse the flywheel. And uh, I, I, uh, photos are always better on a computer than on a projector. But if you look real close in the middle, you can see these are splines that were actually cut into the flywheel. This guy found a machinist who has kind of a really neat special tool that has the ability to cut splines like that into pretty much any type of metal. So this entire flywheel now will just slide right onto the end of his electric motor. And uh, I'm not sure exactly what he's using for you know, um, some sort of a set screw equivalent or something, but it, it's slick. I mean, it just slides on there and it's ready to go and it keeps the original, uh, original clutch and everything. Uh, Ford Ranger. 
Uh, it's you know a, a pretty recent one. It's it's not a dually. It's not the super extended cab. It's just a regular pickup truck, which are pretty popular for electric conversions. No, I think it's just two-wheel drive. Um, Four-wheel drives are always going to be a little less efficient than, uh, than two-wheel drive. Um, I always thought four-wheel drive would be really cool for some sort of a hybrid conversion, though. Um, so once, uh, once we had the engine and transmission put together, then it was just a matter of putting that back down in the car. So now I got a friend with an engine hoist that I borrowed instead of trying to bench press the darn thing in there. Uh, the next thing is a controller. And what a uh, motor speed controller does is it controls the power between the batteries and the motor so that when you press on the accelerator of the car, your motor spins at the appropriate speed. This is the single most complicated thing on the car. Fortunately, there's already one of these on every single electric golf cart in the country. It's an off-the-shelf part. So uh, basically, it's just a black box. And it's got uh, three or four power connectors on it. You just bolt the battery cables to that into the motor. That's it. I mean, like if you've ever jump started a car before, it's like the same thing. You know, there's the plus and there's the minus. Don't mix them up. You know, that's that's really all there is to it. Um, I bought that off eBay for 200 bucks. Uh, the only downside to that is it only supports up to 72 volts. Um, now next to it over here, uh, this is an open source controller. Uh, open source is something that's been used for a while, usually for software. You know, people get together and say, let's design some software. If somebody else wants to change it, make it better, let them. Let everybody chime in with their best ideas. Well, on this controller, there was a, a guy that I've never, to this day, I've never met him, but I know him just on the internet through web forums. And he said, uh, you know what would be great is a higher voltage controller. Those get expensive quick. Could we build our own? for less money? And the answer, of course, is yes, we can. Uh, so this is a controller that I built. Now, I'm not a master of uh, details, like making caulk look good and things like that. But it's very serviceable. It works really well. And that's a 144 volt controller. Now, another thing to keep in mind is 144 volts is twice as many as 72. And that's a good thing. Because on a DC electric motor, the more volts you put through it, the faster it spins which means that this controller can drive the car twice as fast as that controller does. Um, now, when I got my, my speeding ticket in the electric car, frankly, it, it really didn't matter which controller I had in there. But uh, this one uh, has a theoretical top speed in my car of 75 miles an hour. I say theoretical because I've only made it up to 72 because I know right on the other side of the hill there is where the cop always parks. So I have to you know, start slowing down there, of course. But it's, it's a really cool concept that people have just come together and said, you know what, let's do it. Let's do this ourselves. And that was another really big thing about this car, was there weren't any electric cars I could just run out and buy. And with this, I could just make one, just do it myself. Um, even though this is a, an electronics thing, uh, my buddy has instructions online. He's got like a 100-page PDF file, shows you step by step how to build it. And it has a list of every single part in there. So you go to two electronics companies. Here's the list of parts. You just send it to them, get those parts sent to you. It's like painting by number. You know, it's like resistor one, hole one, click. That's it. You know, it's really uh, pretty easy to do. But if you're not interested in doing your own electronics, buy one of these. Um, it's basically just a high-end golf cart controller. <clears throat> um, I'll refer you to a, re a website at the end of this. Um, for batteries, I'm just using plain lead-acid batteries in this. 